Hey there, friends. I talk about it all the time, how we as responsible gun owners have way more training and hold ourselves to a much higher standard than most people out there, including most law enforcement. But that didn't stop this Michigan State Police public information officer from running his mouth anyway. Mike Shaw, a public information officer, <laughs> that sounds like such an intimidating role, right? Made a statement on Twitter after an alleged road rage incident that stated, here's another example of a CPL holder not being able to handle their emotions because traffic was slow due to a crash. This suspect lost their cool, grabbed an accessible handgun, and put others at risk. We are lucky he didn't pull the trigger. Well, first of all, I hope that driver, the person who pulled his handgun and was mad, has attorneys on retainer because, again... I'd much rather have an attorney on retainer than have some of these other, uh -oh, let's not even mention them by name, uh, insurance companies out there who might drop you. And this looks like one of those cases that might drop you. But that's not the point here. The point here is that our fluffer friend over here, Mike Shaw, is disparaging concealed carry holders. We hear this all the time. I know that whenever I spoke in committee in Louisiana, we were fighting for concealed, uh, or excuse me, we were fighting for permitless carry and trying to get rid of the concealed carry permit requirement that I spoke, unfortunately, in front of the Baton Rouge police chief and the state police or a state police captain with the Louisiana State Police. And again, unfortunately, I spoke before them because I would have loved to have been able to come in after them because they spoke how poorly trained people were who carried guns in the state of Louisiana and other states as well in comparison to law enforcement. Neither one of these guys had guns on their hips, right? And they probably don't carry on a daily basis like we do. We hold ourselves to a different standard. We hold ourselves to a standard that law enforcement, I wish, would hold themselves to. Unfortunately, they don't. Let's not forget that many of these law enforcement guys and most of these law enforcement guys are not gun guys. In fact, like our fluffer friend over here, Mike Shaw, probably is anti-gun, doesn't like guns at all, so certainly not a gun guy. And what I mean by a gun guy, he likely does not train. He likely does not know about guns. He likely cannot break a gun down. We saw the ATF guy, the expert, trying to break down a simple-ass Glock the other day. Couldn't do it. I'm guessing old Mike here probably couldn't either. Now, based on this picture, I can't tell if this was before or after Mike's transition. One thing he's probably hiding is the fact that he's assuming that you're going to buy into the BS that he is an expert, that he is a firearms guy, that he is qualified to speak on firearms. He's not. In the state of Michigan, Michigan State Police are not required to qualify but one time a year. You heard that right. A Michigan State police officer is not required to touch his firearm any more than one time a year. If any of us, me, you, anyone out there, only shot their gun one time a year, their pistol, their sidearm, the one they carry daily, if you only shot that thing one time a year, I would say you might be a danger. Because you're not going to have the amount of training that most of us hold ourselves to. And I'm saying this sarcastically because I'm pretty sure that most of you out there definitely touch your gun more than once a year. We know our way around the guns. We can break down a gun, not like the ATF, quote, expert. We take ourselves to the range. We make sure that we're proficient. We understand that once that, that projectile leaves our muzzle, that where that projectile lands is our responsibility. We don't have immunity, right? There's a distinct difference between us who carry on a daily basis and a law enforcement officer who carries. Now, I'm not saying there's not law, uh, qualified law enforcement officers. I know some who hold themselves to a very high standard and they are in fact gun guys. Most of your, I guess, special operations type guys, uh, SWAT guys, I see them train. I, try, I, I film on one of the same lots where some of these guys train locally. I see the work they put in. That's probably, what, 4 or 5% of the overall workforce of a police force? The rest of those guys got to clean cobwebs and dust bunnies out of their pistols. Probably like old Mike Shaw here. These guys are not qualified to carry a gun on a daily basis because everything from budget cuts to other BS 
these guys don't have the budget to either shoot their guns more regularly or the desire to do so. And they certainly aren't going to do it away from the job. So if the Michigan State Police Department is only requiring these people to shoot once a year, I can guarantee you old Mike here is touching his gun once a year. He's got no reason to do it otherwise, but he's the expert, right? Let me let me get his uh his little title again here. This is really good. Was it public safety officer? That was a cute little name. Where is that? Yeah, he's a, he's a public information officer, not safety. He's public information. Mike's way more qualified to talk about firearms than you and I because he's public information, right? Make no mistake that these guys are a lot different than us. And when I say different, I don't mean better. Not only do they put their hands on their spouses a lot more often than any other trade out there, and I'm not trying to disparage this trade. I'm just saying it is a statistical fact that these law enforcement officers are four times more likely to beat the brakes off of their spouses and significant others. So I'm not sure if Mike's wife or boyfriend is aware of this, but Mike is much more of a danger than any guy driving a vehicle out there who might be a CPL holder in the state of Michigan. Now, with that being said, I'm not taking up for the guy who was a CPL holder that pulled his gun, that brandished his weapon. He did not pull the trigger, no shots were fired. So this guy was more brandishing than anything, excuse me, brandishing rather than anything else. Not a good thing, certainly not a good look, but guess what? He didn't pull the trigger. He did not pull the trigger. So tells me he had a little bit of restraint, right? Stupid for brandishing, stupid for pulling his weapon, but we also don't know the full story of this either. It may have been an instance where he pulled his weapon in self-defense. I firmly would stand at that belief system a whole lot quicker than I would that he brandished and tried to threaten somebody else because as a CPO holder, again, a lot of these people will hold themselves to a higher standard. If you unfortunately run into one of these guys like this public information officer or any other guy who's just anti-gun, guys, please consider joining Attorneys on Retainer. These guys will protect you whether or not it is deemed that you are, quote, guilty of whatever crime prior to your actual trial. Very important to know that there is a distinct difference between insurance for carry purposes and having an actual attorney on retainer. Attorneys on retainer is the way to go. Use my discount code FTATF to receive 50% off at the time of sign up. This is going to give you 50 bucks off of your sign up fee. Again, use my code FTATF. Check them out. Attorneys on retainer. The main point I want to make is the next time you're around somebody who's presumed to be more of a firearms expert than you, don't fall for it. It's very likely that just like the state of Michigan, these people are only required to touch their firearm one time a year, and that's simply to qualify and hit a big giant target seven feet away or seven yards away. In most cases, the qualification, the bar, so to speak, ain't that high for these guys, right? They could stand in a room and hit three walls and probably pass. So don't be bullied and intimidated when these guys start speaking out. And I say this because just like what I dealt with in the state of Louisiana, you have high-ranking law enforcement officials who do their best to gaslight us and talk down to us when we, in a month, typically have received and mandated upon ourselves more firearms training than these people will see in their entire career. So again, please don't let these people talk down to you and belittle you and make it sound like just because they have a badge and they carry a gun daily that they are any more trained than you. My guess is I will take a guy out there, whether he's open carrying, concealed carrying, whichever. I'll take the average American who carries on a daily basis to my side and help defend me long before I will take any of these once a year qualified law enforcement officers that talk a big game and can't back it up. God save the queen, man. I'm sorry, I thought this was America.